Okay. Um, I had the opportunity, the pleasure. Um, let me let me rephrase that and get it right out of respect for today's guest. I had the pleasure of sitting down and speaking with this man several months ago. And um, I started off that interview by saying it was going to be heavy. I knew that conversation was going to be heavy. And even as I come into this conversation, I, I don't know another way to put it except to say it's probably going to be heavy. Um, I do this because I love, uh, I, I don't just enjoy, but I love speaking to fascinating human beings, human beings that just intrigue me and really just intrigue the human spirit. This is one of those guys. Uh, let me get his credentials correct. The first black sniper in Army 3rd Battalion, hopefully 3rd Ranger Battalion, hopefully I got that right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Machine gunners, sniper, 33 confirmed kills, confirmed kills as a sniper, probably the same, if not more, as a machine gunner. Please welcome author of the brand new book, The Reaper, Reaper the Board, my brother, Nicholas Irvin. Nick, what's, and, and should I, is, is, it, is it Sergeant Nicholas Irvin? How, how should no, I no. properly? Nick is fine. Nick is fine. I'm a I'm a regular guy, man. Nick, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show, brother. Um, you you you're a fascinating yet inspiring human being, man. And um, I, I I'm sure you get emails, you get texts, you get DMs from people all around the globe, no letting you know how you have impacted their life. Correct. I do. And it still is weird to this day. Like I, it's, it, I don't know. I've always been that type of guy. It dates back to, I think since I was a kid, but even like awards that I have and people from the military, thank you for saving my life. It's not that I don't like it. I do like it. It's just hard for me to see myself in that light. Um, I don't know. I get, naturally I'm a nervous shy guy naturally very shy and when i get praise like that or, or, or thanks um i i kind of take it i don't know how to take it i didn't grow up getting too much of you know that affection or, or someone saying hey i'm proud of you i didn't grow up with you know my parents never really indulged that with me and um it's it as, as an adult it's just hard to hard to take but i get it it's just, I'm thankful for it. Definitely thankful for it. I, it's just hard for me to, I guess, take that or, or feel, I get all mushy, I guess. I don't know. It's a weird, <laughs> weird, weird vibe. I don't know. How many times were you deployed, Nick? Uh, six times. Six times. All six times saw combat? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All six times. Never a dull moment. There was one deployment I didn't shoot anybody, but there was a, a lot of stuff going on, like uh, hostage rescues with SEAL Team 6 and um, things of that nature. But I never I never pulled the trigger on, on one deployment. But the other five, it was heavy, heavy combat. And, and, and that's why you get the thanks that you get. Um, I know when many people hear your story, the first thing that rings out is 33 confirmed kills as a sniper, at least that many as a machine gun, at the bare least. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't even believe you have an accurate count on that. No, no. But for people who have never seen combat, for people who walk around and just enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy in this great country, mm -hmm. it's because of people like you who put it all on the line. And y'all are these unsung heroes. And because we know your story, we get to thank you, but there are so many more just like you who have gone over there time and time again and has given it everything. And in a yeah. lot of cases, they've given literally everything, including their life. So yeah. I got to salute you up front, brother. Thank you so much for your service. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, take me back to the beginning. You said when you were coming up, you didn't get those type of accolades, those type of thank yous within your family. Um, what type of parents did you have? They were strict. Um, 
I think it came from their childhood. Like they were raised by really abusive parents. Um, a lot of domestic violence, ton of domestic violence. My dad lost his dad uh, when he was in the sixth grade, I believe. Um, my mom's dad would always beat her mom and, and the children. And my dad's been beat. My dad, my dad's dad was a, a big alcoholic. So um, every day he would come home drunk and he'd just take all his anger out on uh, the mom and the kids. So there's plenty of stories of that. And they never, uh, the first time my mom was told that she was loved by her dad, she was in her adult you know, age and, and they just didn't know how to express that emotion. So for me as a child growing up, having parents who never had that expressed to them, it was always like they didn't know how um, to say, I'm proud of you. Uh, that didn't happen until I was in, you know, in my later, later stages in life too, but, uh, they just didn't grow up that way. And I think that kind of, you know, got passed down to, to me and my little sister of never having that, you know, I'm proud of you. Good job. And I just thought I was a bad kid and I never deserved it. So I didn't think too much of it. It wasn't until my mom, you know, she was like, you got to break the cycle. And, you know, with my kid and, and not being the same way that they were to us. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that's how my childhood was. They were strict parents, but just never were too emotional. They were never too emotional. It was all, always about being just tough, being strict, you know, not allowed to cry, not allowed to, you know, yeah, pretty much just be soft. It was just, it was, it was a strict parents, strict parents. Yeah, both, both of your parents were in the service, correct? Yeah, they were both in the service. My dad did. I don't even want to, I think it was 18 years. My mom did six or seven or eight, something like that. After she had me, uh, her contract was up and she ended up leaving the army, but they were both in. And um, I think that derives, you know, that that's why they were the way they were too. Uh, a mix of that, just being strict and very by the book, attention to detail, learning how to make a military bed at a very, you know, elementary school and all that. You know, that's why I asked, because you, you told me about their upbringing with their parents. Um, mm -hmm. and far too often, there's a cycle. You know, you don't receive love and you, in turn, don't give love. Mm -hmm. But them both being in the service, there's a regimen that mm -hmm. you must follow within the service. And I'm wondering if that also played into the fact of how they raised you and your sister. Oh yeah, 100%. My dad especially, like he was um the punishments I would get would be military style punishments. You know, just, you know, push-ups and um stress positions like squats, holding weights weights out, books out over your head and 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 stuff like that. They were just my dad was the strictest when it came to that military standard by the book. There's only one way. Uh that was more so him. My mom was just I don't know. Sometimes she was along for the ride. It felt like, and I don't know, but she was uh, <laughs> not as strict as my dad. She was more. Um, yeah, she showed tough love, a lot of tough love. Um, she didn't want to. She was not like the moms you see on TV or the moms that I would see in movies. You know, I, I didn't have that type of mom. She was she was hands on. She was a tomboy when she was growing up as a, as a kid. And um yeah she was uh she was a little like rough rougher did they raise you in the church they did they did it was church and i hated it but it was church every sunday every sunday i had uh, uh sunday school and then on like wednesdays i would have to go to uh the church to learn sign language with my mom um she was the sign language person for the church and she was hard of hearing uh lost most of her hearing in the military and um, she would do all the sign language for the church. So I was very involved and my dad would make props for the Christmas plays that I, I was involved in and the Easter plays. So yeah, I was in the choir. I was a, uh, what do you call those boys? The, um, the acolyte is the, the, the acolyte. I forget what it's called. The what, what, what denomination are we talking? Methodist. Okay. You Methodist. Uh-huh. So, yeah, was, yeah, and I was the, 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 the 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 kid who like assisted the pastor. So I was like always in the church, always in the church. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, 
go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.